Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 96, I'm going to re-record this because the volume uh, was a little too low on the prior recording, so this will be a replacement. Uh, but here we'll be taking a look at architectural roadmaps and specifically an introduction, taking a look at why they exist, the different parts and construction of an architecture roadmap. And then in future lessons, we'll take a look at each of the various models that a roadmap consists of. So when we take a look at an architecture roadmap, a roadmap really describes the steps involved with transforming the enterprise, performing some sort of initiative, and then how that change will be implemented. As a matter of fact, in most enterprise architecture, efforts. A lot of modeling goes on. There's a lot of frameworks like TOGAF and Zachman and FIAF and all this. But whatever modeling we do, whatever framework we use, however meetings we have, the ultimate outcome of an enterprise architecture effort is in fact to produce this roadmap consisting of the various iterations to be able to transform the enterprise the various segments. These could be applications, these could be systems, these could be divisions or departments, depending on the scope of the initiative. And finally, within the intersection of those are the various projects that usually get handed off to application architects or development teams to be able to figure out uh, the details of how a certain thing is going to be implemented. When we take a look at an architecture roadmap, there's really three main contexts within a roadmap. Most of the time we think it's just one, one big picture, but it really does consist of three types of transformation that the roadmap does describe. There's the architecture and technology transformation. There may be business workflows that need to change within our organization to achieve a certain initiative. And finally, there might be organizational restructuring that may be needed, especially for larger types of uh, initiatives or even something like moving to microservices requires organizational structure transformation as well. And that's the advent of uh, DevOps, for example, creating DevOps teams, really that uh, reorganization into cross-functional teams with specialization, for example, the bridging and collaboration between testers and development teams and also release engineering. All this is an organizational transformation. So some of the initiatives to give you an example of what we would create a roadmap for with an enterprise architecture are things like as follows. So maybe the company wants to leverage technology to reduce manual processes and be able to increase efficiency. Make it happen. So we develop a roadmap to show the steps involved in making that happen. Maybe it's to better control costs across the organization, particularly with technology and infrastructure that might also, though, be organizational transformation. It might also be business workflows, not just IT. Another example that is mostly IT transformation probably is to gain better control of data across the organization to eliminate redundancy and to be able to increase our accuracy. Another example would be to simply, as, as um, non-concrete as increase our competitive advantage and market share and increase our customer base. Hmm, how's that going to happen? Uh, that will involve some sort of transformation across the enterprise. And now when we take a look at roadmaps, there's two main approaches that you can take in constructing the consolidated view of a roadmap. The first of those is called a context-based approach. Let's say that our initiative is to fully automate the order fulfillment process. There's too many manual processes. So we're going to fully automate that. Well, that might require a roadmap for the architecture and technology transformation. And then we might have a separate roadmap that we would create for all the business workflows that may change to fully automate that fulfillment process. Third, there might be organizational transformation that is required. So the context-based roadmap approach takes each of these three different aspects and creates a roadmap for each of them. Now, there are pros and cons of this kind of approach. Uh, these roadmaps tend to be smaller, simpler roadmaps that have a targeted audience. And so as an IT professional, for example, I may be more focused on the architecture and technology transformation than the various business workflow changes that occur. These roadmaps tend to be simpler, a lot easier to understand. However, a couple of big problems associated with these. The coordination 
is really difficult of something that I am specifying in the second iteration that has to match up with also an organizational change on that second iteration and maybe dependencies with some business workflow transformation. And consequently, the synchronization between all three of these becomes rather difficult. Another approach is the consolidated roadmap approach. This is where we want to fulfill or automate the order fulfillment process. In this case, I'm going to create one large consolidated view of a roadmap that includes all three of those dimensions the architecture and technology transformation, the business workflow transformation, and maybe the organizational change that's needed as well. The advantage here is that we have one easy holistic view of the overall approach. It's easier to manage the coordination because we can clearly visually see the dependencies between these different dimensions, between technology, business workflows, and organizational change. And that holistic view is sometimes useful for being able to determine, especially not if, but when something slips, what else does it impact on other dimensions? However, as you can guess, there are some negative trade-offs here. Uh, these roadmaps, folks, tend to get very complex because we're taking really a two-dimensional piece of paper and adding a third dimension. So not only do we have the iterations and the segments, but now we also have the dimension as well. And finally, the other challenge is that we do get multiple authors for a single document. And I'm considering the roadmap as, a, for example, a large Visio plotter diagram. And so we have three authors to those, and that sometimes can get a little dicey. Um, but a lot of these trade-offs are kind of based on the environment that you have, as well as the, well, healthy collaboration between the various stakeholders. Now, a roadmap, actually, if we opened up the hood, really consists of three primary models. When we do modeling within enterprise architecture, the first model is our iteration model. And this determines, hmm, how am I going to get from point A to point B, especially with any of those initiatives that we just saw? And the iteration model essentially generates projects. It specifies the iterations that we're going to be doing and the various projects that need to happen within the various segments of that roadmap. And these projects then get fed into a second model, which is the portfolio model, which then does all sorts of sizing, classification, staffing, uh, all the necessary kind of usually the PMO or project management stuff to really fully qualify and document each of those projects. Uh, once those projects are fully qualified, and then they go into a third model, which is the prioritization model, which then takes a look at the priorities based on the sizing, staffing, cost, and then reprioritizes the projects given certain dependencies. And all of these finally lead into the consolidated view. Now, in future lessons, I'm going to be devoting lesson number 97 to looking at uh, the iteration model in a level of detail. Uh, lesson 98, the portfolio model. And finally, lesson 99, we'll take a look at the prioritization model. These three models end up all like, are all like cogs. I love this visualization because any change to any of these models, any one of these models, requires necessarily a change in the other models. And so one of the complexities of a roadmap is that all three of these models have to be kept in sync. And so I love the cogs because if you move any of these three cogs around and make a change, it impacts the other two. And so these are kind of the inner workings of really what constructs a roadmap. And like I said, in future lessons, the next three, we'll take a look at the iteration portfolio and prioritization model and see what those consist of to finally create our consolidated view. Some resources that might be helpful for you, Neil Ford and I in February of 2020, uh, published our, our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, really useful that contains really the three core dimensions of architecture. The first third is on techniques and characteristics. The second third is on all the architecture styles, more the technical architecture piece. And then part three uh, is really about the soft skills and techniques of architecture. So it's a, it's a great book because <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> and so, uh, and the other, uh, the other resource, of course, is developer2architect.com, um, my give back website where uh, I do have articles, books, videos, uh, these lessons right here, and also I do training classes and workshops as well. 
So this has been Lesson 96, Architecture Roadmaps and Introduction. Uh, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned uh, in two more Mondays uh, for the next lesson where we'll take a look at the iteration model of roadmaps. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.